Hello, and welcome to chapter 15, where we're going to be discussing applications of electrode chemistry to analytical chemistry. Um, specifically, we're going to be looking at potentiometry, the use of measuring electrical potentials to determine concentrations of species in solution. And we do this through the use of specially designed electrodes for this purpose. Uh, we discussed in the last chapter how uh, there is a relationship because of the equilibrium constant between electrodes, uh, between potentials, electrical potentials and concentrations. And we're gonna explore that idea further and look at how measurements are actually done uh, and what sort of uh, equipment we use to do this and what sort of things we need to think about as we do this. Uh, so uh, electrochemistry is much bigger than just potentiometry. There are many other types of electrochemical measurements that can be done. We're just gonna focus in on this one uh, specific type of uh, electrochemical measurement. There are additional chapters in your textbook that cover this. Uh, as well as in the online textbook um, that, that go over the um, applications of electrochemistry in other areas. So uh, one of the most important parts uh, to be able to measure something reliably in electrochemistry is the idea of a reference electrode. And that will be our first topic uh, for today. So reference electrodes are electrodes that provide a stable potential to compare measurements to. Uh, and this is important because any potential energy that we measure is always a difference. It always involves a difference between two things. There's no such thing as a potential all on its own. This was you know, an idea we talked about with standard potentials, that we needed a reference point to compare them to, and the hydrogen, standard hydrogen electron is chosen as that reference point. Um, when we're doing actual measurement, we need a reference point as well. And the, the point of reference electrodes is to provide a stable potential that we can compare our thing that we'd like to measure to. Um, so this uh, is a point of comparison for our unknown potentials. Unknown here me meaning our unknown solutions that we're, we're measuring. And so any electrochemical measurement uh, always involves a reference electrode because you always need something to compare it to where you know what the, the potential of that uh, reference electrode is. Uh, so let's look at one type of reference electrode uh, and, and, and figure out how this, this would work. So let's imagine we have a solution that looks, or a situation looks like this. So I'm gonna sort of draw a picture here. So we're gonna, and this is one of the most common reference electrodes here, we're gonna have a silver electrode with silver chloride solid on the outside of it. And then in addition, at the bottom here, we have some potassium chloride solid. Um, we have sufficient potassium chloride that this solution is a saturated solution of chloride. So this is a saturated KCl solution. Now this would be one half of an electrode. We'd have a salt bridge here. And for now, I'm just gonna ignore what's in the other half of this. The other half will be our unknown. But this is a this is the basic idea behind a silver silver chloride reference electrode. So we have a silver wire, we have silver chloride, uh, and the uh, this the potential the the reduction reaction that we'd write for this is AgCl solid plus an electron going to being reduced to Ag solid plus chloride, aqueous. Now, what makes this useful as a reference electrode, why we can get a nice stable potential from this, is these, this saturated KCl solution here is really key to this. This gives us a fixed chloride concentration. And it's a you know, very high, highly concentrated solution, so any small changes won't have a huge effect on the potential, which is useful. Uh, and so uh, if we write out the Nernst equation for this half cell, uh, right, if we write, you know, say this is the negative terminal, uh, E minus will be equal to E naught minus minus 0 0.05916 volts divided by N times the log. And then we look at our reduction potential here, or reduction reaction. We have two solids that won't show up in Q, our equilibrium uh, quotient, our reaction quotient. Uh, so the only 
the only concentration that shows up there is the concentration of chloride, which is a product, so that will go on the top of our, um, our fraction here. And, but we know that the chloride concentration is fixed. Uh, so we can look up the value of E naught minus. E naught for the reduction of silver chloride is uh, 0.222 volts. But what we'll measure on this potential is, of course, not exactly that, because we don't have a one molar concentration of chloride. It ends up being significantly higher. Uh, the concentration of chloride is about 4.2 molar. And really, it's not the concentration we care about. It's the activity of chloride. And at these high concentrations, uh, the concentration activity are quite different. The activity is about 2.65. Uh, so if we use that, we get that the overall potential, so not to the standard potential, but the, the actual potential you'd measure compared to a hydrogen electrode, uh, E for this is positive 0 0.197 volts. So you get something a little bit different because that activity is higher than one. And this is the known potential for a silver-silver chloride reference electrode. And then we can connect another electrode to the other side of our potentiometer, you know, set up with the salt bridge and everything to actually do a measurement. Uh, and this provides us a stable reference electrode that we can compare things to. In the next video, we'll look at using this to do an actual measurement uh, where we have something on the right-hand side of this galvanic cell.